Lemon Amiga presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Hi there, once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga gameplay, game guide and review. This time we'll be checking out T-Racer, developed and published by Virtual Dreams in 1994. Virtual Dreams were based, as far as I know, in Italy, and you can see the main code there, Alberto Longo, and all of the team from this game went on to Breathless AGA, for power computing in 1996. Pressing that fire button, we gain a few small options, and in this game, we choose the easy, normal, and hard mode. Of course, let's go for easy for this, the maximum lives, and a normal bonus as well. From here, we can also save and view those high scores on the high score table. It. Not quite sure what that does, maybe that returns us to the tile page, but let's just press fire and check this game out. T-Racer, the pickups are hidden inside certain enemies, and if you collect all those at the start, then that gives us some firepower. And if you miss those pickups, then unfortunately, all you can do is press the escape key, and then you can start that level again. Picking up the weapons early, that gives us a fighting chance, and as you can see, this is a horizontal scrolling shoot em up, much like Project X. In fact, they've managed to rip off the Project X sprite and the sound effects, and virtually the gunfire, incidentally, 100%. And you can see some more scrolling effects, we gain some scrolling clouds and some scrolling backgrounds as well. And for the background audio, we gain some air samples, much like the second level of Project X. Like Project X, you will find pretty similar enemies. In fact, the enemy patterns are very similar, in fact, and you will gain glowing bullets, which helps against this background. I do admit that this background is much better than Project X. of the screen you can see we have the number of lives which is seven in this case the energy is almost full and the stealth we are actually saving for the end of level boss Thank <laughs> you. 
patience with those enemies, we could always collide into them and lose some energy. Unfortunately, that really does damage the ship. So it's better to be patient in this game and steadily move our way around those enemies the slow way and that saves as much energy as possible. The staged enemies aren't too difficult, but their firepower is a random, so if you can't defeat random firepower, now is the time to master it. And those kamikaze dives into the corner can only be defeated if you press the space bar, and that gives us some shield. We aren't quite sure which of these will give us the power-ups and they are in the same enemies every single time you play the level. Unfortunately, there's just too many of them to figure out where it is. And so at this stage, I'm just shooting everything and hoping that something has some energy in there More energy. and includes a weapon upgrade. my money, the enemies which crawl slowly along the bottom of the screen are more than likely to have that energy in there, so I tend to take my time and get rid of them straight away so that I can get that energy back, and I tend to forget about the stealth, which is important, and unfortunately if you veer into those enemies you'll die, but there is safe spots as you can see that we can hide in and not incur any damage whatsoever. Brings us on to the end of first level boss, and with this, this firepower, it's not too bad. And it's a good job that we did collect this earlier on in the level, and you can see that it's a normal repetitive pattern to get rid of it. And if you press the space bar and activate the shield, you can simply plow into the middle of that thing and kill it the easy way. At the end of stage 1.1 we managed to miss zero power-ups which means we collected them all on that level that's terrific most of them are right at the beginning so you can easily quit if you miss them on level 1.2 we gain some more enemies and this time they flow in a different pattern and this time we have to really get stuck into them to wipe out a wave i'm not quite sure whether you need to get rid of an entire wave or just the enemy itself which contains that power-up but if you can find it, wherever it is, and memorise wherever it is on that level, then you should be able to aim directly for it. I'd just like to give a huge shout out to the Nick Jenkin, the N Jenkin channel and this was a brand new game to me until Nick played this on his channel and as I like to say everybody brings something to the table in the Amiga community and this is a game I'd never seen or even heard of before until that very review so thank you Nick this video is dedicated to you because if it wasn't for you playing this on your channel I would probably never have played this ever at all. More energy. Certain parts of the game feel almost shareware quality or licenseware and not quite full price even despite these 
backgrounds and despite these great enemies and all the colours involved and yes this game does use at least probably one to eight maybe two five six colours with those backgrounds New weapon. More we do get extra weapons every now and again and that helps us defeat the enemies and there are a variety of different weapons in the game Project X, we've managed to pick up some guided missiles as well. And they'll fly around the screen, and hit things at random, and I think we have at least one or two of those floating around. And you can see that laid into those enemies at this stage, you really need the good firepower. And it's disappointing when the vast majority of enemies don't contain any power ups. We will continue from where we left off, and that's terrific because there's nothing worse than losing all our firepower and starting the entire game from the beginning. This game has no checkpoints, but we simply continue from where we died, and that is terrific. We don't even lose any speed or any power ups either, and because those power ups are hard fought, that's great. But at this stage, the game feels a bit over long, and we seem to be wading knee deep into the enemies before we find the end of level boss and the levels just feel just a bit too overlong to be comfortable. Finding the second first world boss is identical to the first first world boss and what we have to do is to blast that thing in the side and hopefully we can get rid of its direct firepower and of course all we need to do is to press the space bar and plow straight into it but we only get one shield per world and once you've used up that shield I'm not quite sure if you get another one back maybe you get a full shield after every life. We missed two power-ups in that entire level and we have four lives remaining, so it's time to move on to a bonus game. Get ready! In this bonus game we play on something which looks suspiciously like a Game Gear. And in this Game Gear we can manoeuvre around this tunnel going for those gaps and if we press the fire button that will slow us down and sometimes you need to press the fire button to slow you down if you can't make the gaps. You have a certain number of these to get through and if you collide with any of these you will take damage and you can't afford too much damage and you also lose time as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell us how many gates that we need to get through, but you can see that the T has revealed the end of level, and we went through an S there as well, which gives us an extra shield. Yeah. 
In the second world, we find a background drawing which is pretty similar to the first world of Project X. And here we can see a scrolling star field background, but very few planets in the background. Unfortunately, we get to see a number of mega ships instead. More power. <laughs> Staged enemies appear more quickly, but they are very easy to knock out. As you can see, if we keep collecting those power-ups, then they shouldn't take too many hits to destroy. And there's nothing worse than enemies which take too many hits in these types of games. It's also great that we don't get destroyed if we make contact with something, we'll simply lose energy. And with some enemies that isn't too bad, and some enemies make a dive for us right at the last moment. You can see we've just picked up another weapon upgrade, which has given us something that looks a lot like the plasma. And now the enemies really do take some hammering, even with the plasma. You can see I'm going to have to upgrade that quite a bit, because those enemies are quite tough. firepower is rather much narrower as well with the plasma so we don't have the spread and so we have to aim more or less on target with a fixed weapon that makes the game a little bit harder and you can see avoiding all this firepower isn't particularly easy when you want to destroy the entire wave just in case it has something in it and then we get through to a delta like maze of asteroids and in here just like the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, we find ships hidden in there who will try to kamikaze our craft and if you are in the way of them, then they will collide with us and we'll take some damage. Like Delta, we can't loop that level forever and get tons of lives. In fact, I don't think you get any lives unless you complete the bonus with tons of gates remaining. At the moment, we haven't gained any lives and we're still on four of them. And I'm not quite sure whether you get lives at score checkpoints. Now we find a new weapon, and that new weapon has arrived just in time for us to get killed on the final boss. So let's press that space bar again, and you can see the stealth is slowly dropping as we lay into those guys. one power up but we don't disappear into the turbo tunnel at this point we continue with 2.1 2.1 continues with the same enemies and we get a blue space background almost like elite frontier and we get some scrolly stars as well which is very demo like and it lifts this game up just a little bit 
And this game appeared in 1996, so nobody reviewed it in any magazines. I'm not quite sure if the T-Racer demo, which appeared in Amiga Power, is actually the same game. But nobody actually reviewed this, and only one review is online. And the comments are from the Lemon Amiga website, and they give this an average score of, well, 6 out of 10 which is a good game but it's not a very good game most players got bored of this before probably they even got this far this section we actually do find checkpoints and it doesn't reset us to where we left off we have to go back to the start and that's not too bad as long as we avoid the mega blast which comes from these things and then it's just timing to get through these beams Noticed our super mega weapon has worn out, and that's because that's only a temporary super mega weapon. And you can find temporary super mega weapons on these levels, but now that that's worn out, we're back down to the plasma again. And again, we're still gonna have to upgrade that thing for it to have a serious impact. And once again, we are treated to another asteroid field. I also think that it's great that we have a stealth mode and you can see that hasn't recharged from the last time we used it because I'm saving that for the end of World 2 boss which should be appearing after this narrow section and of course this reminds us of our type and all the other shooters where we had to avoid this kind of stuff. to our last two lives and as you can see the stealth does not recharge that's why you have to use that sparingly and at the most obtuse moments leaning across to hit the space bar isn't amazing and that's why at least on the emulation you can remap that to another button and have that on the second pad button and I'm using the old zip stick at the moment and here we are this is hopefully at the end of world boss and just like the end of world bosses in other games like Saint Dragon, we find a static object. All we have to do is to destroy it and avoid its firepower, which is just a matter of timing and hopefully not getting bored. I'm not quite sure whether the end of level boss goes back to zero. I pretty much think it does, and that means you have to go through it all again. But luckily this boss isn't so hard, and you can predict when it's about to fire. So as soon as it does, moving down the screen will make us invulnerable, and with a full tank of health, it's possible to soak up these bullets and to take on that boss. 
and I'm probably sure that there is an easier way to do this, but avoiding this firepower isn't too difficult to admit. It's just that it does take a long time to knock out these bosses like it tends to do on a lot of these types of games. managed to miss seven power-ups on that particular level and that would have boosted us through the roof as far as firepower but we didn't manage to pick up any so it's back to the game gear and it's full speed action all the way down this tunnel and at the end of all this we should be able to pick up an S which gives us some more shield this on the 30 so I think it makes this tunnel just a bit faster and smoother as well not that this thing is really hard as long as you look forward you can see where those gaps are about to appear to beat the walls by one we needed 112 and we managed to get 111 on to world three where we find a wibbly wobbly background I think it's a slight shame that there's no proper music in the game, there is just sound effects and on this level we get a few chords which remind us of music and I think it's a shame that the great graphics of the first level are not reproduced over the rest, we don't get to go through tons of different backgrounds, not like Star Ray and other games that we've seen already and these great demo like effects are good but they're not really the quality of Project X. So even though this game has a lot good going for it, it also has some frustrations as well. So this is why most people only gave this a 6 out of 10. The game is playable and it's okay, but it's just not the greatest game on the Amiga. It was another wasted opportunity, and if you've seen my rip-off special, this game was featured in the rip-off special because it ripped off the sprites and the formula of the game, as well as some of the sound effects and even the firepower for Project X. So it looks like that's the end of my lives, it looks like the end of my go in this game. Shots fired 1491, enemies killed 79 and you can see that I managed to hit that high score table. So that's T-Racer, there's not that many reviews of this game, there's no magazines reviewed it or anything like that. It came out way too late and there's not that many people that have heard of it. It's not T-Zero, it's T-Racer, and it's not a racing game, it's a horizontal shooter. up So let's not continue from our last level, let's return back to the cycle sequence. And I'd just like to say thank you once again for Nick Jenkins' review of the game and for introducing this to me, and of course to all those YouTubers that play really weird, wacky, wonderful games that I've never even heard of on the Amiga you know who you are so thanks to the entire community this review has been made 
So thanks once again for reviewing and viewing this, and I hope to see you again in another play guide at some point sometime soon. Thank you.